Well, of course, the Leinster Hurling final is on on Sunday between Dublin and Galway. What an intriguing contest. But this is going to be Dublin's fifth weekend in a row seeing championship action. While Galway have been quiet, obviously, since beating Leash, which camp would you prefer to be in tonight, TJ? Personally, I prefer to be in Dublin's camp. <clears throat> I, would, I would much rather have the momentum of playing matches and being on a high uh, and going in. Now, I, I think... If there was another week or two, it's a different story because yeah. there's a huge come down, even though you've won matches. Yeah. By the fact that you're playing week after week, you're not actually training really hard. And sometimes you have tougher training sessions than you do actually have a match. So this team has been together for the last four or five weeks. They've come through real pressure situations. And really, and then the biggest one of all is obviously beating the All-Ireland champions. And, and that can only carry momentum into the finals. So if it is me... I'd rather be in, in the Dublin camp. Does fatigue become a factor, Stephen, playing five games in a row? It can do, but as, as DJ said, I'd agree with him in terms of momentum. In fairness, Dublin, they're a young team. They're extremely fit. Um, you know, I, I've been very impressed with the way they've operated. Like they, they could have gone down and, and they came back because you know, they didn't perform so well against Wexford the first day. There was a lot of jitters, a lot of nervous, a lot, a lot of poor striking and poor option taking. But they're, they're learning as they're going along and there's no better place to learn than learn in matches. You know, in tight games, and who better to play against than Kenny in two games? Galway haven't had a tough game. Now, Leash played very, very well against them. Galway did not play well. So, you know, you just don't know what way Galway are going to go, you know. Where do you think Galway are at at the moment? As Stephen said, they weren't great against Leash, but well, how he, would you rate them? You mentioned their fatigue, but there's also like the mental aspect as well. You know, Dublin are going to be in, in a great place mentally going into that, whereas Galway are going to have a little bit of self doubt. You know, they didn't play so well against um, Leash, you know, they haven't really been tested. But there's also um, the factor, Marty, as well, that, you know, Dublin are in the Leinster Championship and they're Leinster County, whereas Galway are in the Leinster Championship on their way to win an All-Ireland, to get more games to win the All-Ireland. Yeah. So you have to look at that as well, you know. But as for Galway, they, they just, they need to be tested. And on, on Sunday then, it, it's going to tell a lot. What about, you know, Anthony Cunningham's role here? Because obviously Galway were, were probably in their mind preparing to play Kilkenny particularly when a replay was coming up. Actually, Kenny always win the replays. How will Galway cope with Dublin style, do you think? Well, is Dublin style very similar to, uh, similar to their own? Uh, mm. You know, Galway have brought back the extra man back uh, to the backs to play in midfield. Dublin seem to have done the same, particularly against Kilkenny. So um, both, both will run at the fences, pick the ball up and run at the fences. But I suppose I think the biggest thing is where do you play Joe? Mm. And where does Joe stay? Uh, the one thing that Kilkenny didn't have is is their main man, which was Henry. Galway will have him, but it depends where where does he play because, you know, you, you see him going very well at full forward or corner forward and the next minute he's gone out the field and possibly out of the game a lot. OK, so, DJ Kerry, you're now the Galway manager, <laughs> right? Where would you play, I'd play Joe him, Kenny? Uh, somewhere in the full forward line where he's most dangerous and where he's the biggest threat. If any ball comes in around there, how do you stop him? Mm. Do you Do you have to foul him? or let him go, let him run. And I think he's that good that uh, that's where I would play him, not out the field. I know the argument would be uh, throw him out the field and give him room. Mm. A player like Joe Canning, you want him somewhere around the, the square or the full forward line where he's a massive, massive threat. Uh, I it, think it'll be an intriguing battle. I, I think that uh, Anthony Daly is shrewd and I'd say he looked at how Galway combated Kilkenny last year and more or less kind of took that on board. I won't say copied it because mm. that would be unfair on them, but they play a very similar style and it has worked again. So I'd like Galway are going to have to possibly reinvent themselves now because there, it's going to be a coming together of two exact styles. I would definitely play Joe Canning in the full forward line with probably one other fast guy. OK, I think Croke Park is, is way bigger pitch okay, than maybe than, than Port Leash. And I think he can do a lot more damage in there. You know, so I'll just be intriguing for Sunday. Both of these counties know each other well because they played against each other in under-21 all Ireland as well. But where do you see the advantage Well, in, in, in terms of this particular game? Um, around the half forward line, what uh, Dublin did to the Kilkenny half back line the last day, I thought was pretty special. Um, Danny Sutcliffe, you know, he was great. He's got speed. He could score. Goal. Yeah, I think just around that area, if they can break them down again, if they can break all the way down there, I think that that could be the one for them. In terms of you know, when you're when you're a team like Dublin trying to make that breakthrough, DJ, the preparation, the mental preparation is huge. I know Tony Griffin, for instance, is working in the background with with the Dublin team. They're almost there now. You know, they've won the league. This is the big one for them, isn't it? Well, you know, it's Kilkenny to beat, and I don't want to sound like a broken record. They did beat the All-Ireland champions, you know, uh, which 
it doesn't come much bigger than that. So from from a mental point of view, uh, you know, they, they've come over a huge, huge hurdle. Um, they did beat them a couple of years ago in the in the league final. And, you know, I think what we have to do is we have to give credit credit to Dublin where credit is due. Mm. Uh, they beat Kilkenny Hurling and they are a very, very good team. Uh, and you don't go bad overnight. They hadn't a great year last year, but certainly they are a very, very good team right throughout the field from goalkeeper right up to number 15. One thing, one thing I will say is you just have to say that Kilkenny was possibly their Everest. They're after just about getting to the top of it. Now, where else can they go mm. but maybe slightly down a bit, yeah. even mentally, even subconsciously, even though they mightn't talk about it? I would see similarities in 2007. We took us three matches and two, re two extra times to be Tipperary. We hadn't won a first round in a long time and that was kind of our Everest. And when it came to the, the Munster final, even though that was a massive game as well, I don't think we scaled the same heights. Hmm. Does it, I wonder the only thing is, Stephen, what I, what I would say is that this team is around three or four years. Anthony Daly, it's his fifth, fifth year. year yeah. you know, so they're around a good while. So while uh, Kilkenny is, they've got over Kilkenny mm. as an Everest, Th their ambitions would have been or are much yes, bigger much than bigger. just Kilkenny. Yeah. They, they would have been preparing for Kilkenny for a year, nearly a year. So, so in a word, DJ, are you going for Dublin? I, I'm going for Dublin. And Stephen? Draw. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. I'm yeah. squarely on the fence. <laughs> Dublin. Dublin. Two for Dublin, one draw. Will it?